everybody loves dim sum, but people seem to think it's really tricky to make at home. It's not, and we're gonna show you how to do it today. It's super easy, yeah. we've got beef, shiitake mushrooms, some soya beans, and a few other flavors we're gonna put inside of our dumplings. Plus, we're gonna make a very simple dipping sauce from sake and orange. Jamie, if you can do garlic and ginger, if you can just yep. peel and grate those, and I'm gonna take some of these mushrooms, and just, they're quite leathery almost. But what we wanna do is cut them up nice and small. Now, dim sum, it's not actually just one type of food, is it? It's kind of like tapas. It's a style of eating or a, yeah. Yeah, a cuisine category, I suppose. The Chinese often have it for breakfast. Um, wow. Steamed, much lighter options. What is key is to try and keep all these bits quite small because they're gonna go inside of our filling and you want a little bit of everything when you eat into each individual dumpling. So the first thing we need to cook is our beef mince. This is just a lean beef mince. You can use pork if you prefer. A little shot of oil in the pan and otherwise the mince going in there. And try not to move it around in the pan too much because I'm going to add the mushrooms as well. We want it all to colour off and go nice and golden brown before we agitate it too much to get some okay. good colour on it. Now this is the filling for the dumpling and basically you can make as much as you want because you can use it for other things. It doesn't have to go into these dumplings. It'll also be great just served as a stir fry on top of some rice and some noodles. And to add to it to make it even better, a tablespoon of soy mm -hmm. and a tablespoon of mirin. Plus one spring onion, it doesn't need much, but if you can just slice that up nice and fine. And then for colour and extra protein, super nutritious, some soybeans. These are just frozen, all I've done is defrost them. And all of your spring onions. Yep. Another minute or so bubbling away while we make our dipping sauce, which is even easier. About 100 ml of sake, if you can put that into the pan. And the juice of a whole orange. But believe it or not, that's the filling done. So what we're going to do is leave that to cool down with a little drizzle of sesame oil and a dusting, literally just a teaspoon of corn flour. Leave it to cool down, let this bubble away and reduce yep. by about half and then we can start to construct our dumplings. These are dumpling pastries, very, very fine. Buy these from an Asian supermarket. We're gonna cut them out so they're round to start off with. Place it into your hand, but make like a well and place it over the top there like that. I'm already one step behind. Grab yourself a spoonful of the mixture and put it into that well. And then, a little bit of water, just dab the edges, because essentially these pastries are just flour and water, and this extra water will enable it to stick. And the important thing is to make sure they're sealed fully in. If you make these on a regular basis, you can also, from the Asian supermarket, pick up something like this. And it makes it a lot easier, because the machine does all the work for you. Spoon the mixture in, like so. Dab around the edge. You can use a pastry brush if you find that easier. Close it up, and there you go. You also then get that beautiful crimping, which is perhaps oh, more yeah. traditional, not one you get by hand quite so easily. Now, often dim sum are steamed, however, these ones are pan fried. Okay. And you want to cook them on both sides so they get a bit of colour. But be careful, because they're called pot stickers for a reason. They stick to the Sometimes pan. they can stick, so you do need to be <laughs> quite hot and just keep them moving, and a non stick pan is pretty crucial for this. Nice. Now, the filling we know is already cooked, yep. but you do want to heat it right through to the middle. So at this point, nice and crispy. Nice hot pan, what we do is splash a little bit of water in, put on a tight fitting lid, and just leave them to cook until that water basically disappears again. They'll take about a minute. In the meantime... So it does steam as well a little bit, I suppose. Yes, yeah. but you get that crispy pan fried golden colour and taste from the oil first. Lovely. We've got some Thai basil. Yep. Oh, that's really aniseed. Now you can use regular basil, but you're absolutely right. This has an aniseed and almost a spearminty flavour yeah. as well. So this is now cooled slightly. That's the sake and orange reduction. It smells awesome. Put in our Thai basil into there. And a final addition to that, a little bit of sesame oil. Which won't mix in because it's more like a dressing, it'll be separated. But it is absolutely delicious. We'll just transfer those to our serving platter. They look and smell incredible. Beautiful. There we go. So, there are our version of dim sum, some beef, soy and shiitake mushroom. Let's have a taste. Oh wow. There's a lot of flavour going on there. There's a lot of flavour. That's amazing. And for something that's so simple as a dip, very, very fresh. Now this is our take on some Chinese dim sum pot stickers today. But what else would you like us to cook from around the world? Comment below so we can know. And if you want to get the recipe and the ingredients for this one, make sure you head to sortedfood.com. And of course, as ever, make sure you're subscribed to Body Talk Daily for more weekly recipes.